Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right, traders, today we have a very special video for you guys. As Bao talks about after one week away from the markets and not trading, how do you get back into the groove of things again? How do you come back from a layoff away and get back to profitability? He talks about tickers in question, J-A-G-X, N-I-O with the VWAP reclaim, O-B-L-N, P-D-S-B, S-E-S, and V-I-V-E. And while today is just a preview of the full length video, if you want to watch the full length or any of our exclusive content, then become an MIC member. All right, guys, welcome to another daily recap, October 3rd, 2019. So it's been a little while since we did the last daily recap. And uh, <clears throat> the way I do daily recaps is this. Whenever I find that there is something to teach, I will teach it. I don't want to bombard you guys with the same old stuff over and over that doesn't, I mean, because what's going to happen is this, guys. You guys are going to learn a concept. It's going to take you a while to, to kind of figure it out, to learn that concept, right? It's, but So that's why I don't want to like bombard you guys with too much concepts at once. So we want to stagger it. We want to stagger it. So this is, this is a good opportunity. The reason I wanted to do the re recap today was this. I took a week off of trading. I took a week off to do the San Jose meetup. I met a lot of great people there. It was freaking fantastic. I partied my brains off. I worked my ass off. Alex was there, the whole team, Tosh, everybody was there. It was fucking amazing. And so, dude, I'm like stuck in this, not really a party mode, but a non-work mode. Uh, I wake up around 4.08 every day for trading. I wake up, I go through my routine. So let me talk about that real quick. You have to have a process, you have to have a routine. And the routine goes outside of trading, okay? Like a golfer, okay? A golfer, before he hits, he has his routine. He's doing the same thing over and over. So it becomes like a reflex, you know, like he doesn't even think about the routine. It just happens. So you need to develop a good routine and the good routine is basically is it starts before you even get into your office. Okay. It's, did you sleep well? Did you, did you fight with your girlfriend? Did you have, you know what I'm saying? Good breakfast, things like that. Are you tired? Did you, are you hung over? And so if any of those external personal issues come up, dude, you maybe should not trade that day. And, and that's what I do. It's like, I, either I come to work fully or I don't trade, but, I, but I've been doing this so long that, that I do trade hungover, which is not advisable. But now, I mean, now I, it's a reflex to me. I, it's okay. But, um, so I haven't been trading for the week. I've been waking up really late. I've been staying out really, um, I've been staying up really late and waking up really late. Right. And I've been like hungover and partying with Alex and stuff, you know, cause I haven't seen him in a while. And so I forced myself today to get back into the daily routine, man. I woke up at four o'clock and I'm like, dude, four o'clock. I'm, I'm just so tired. I'm like, I don't really want to work today. Every, so this is what happens, man. I wake up, I'm like, fuck man, I don't want to go work. I don't really need to go work. I have enough. And I'm like, fuck, maybe I'm just gonna go play. But then if, but my work ethic forces me up. Cause I'm like, dude, I got to get my ass up. I have to get back into the routine. So you have to do it. So the guys left and I woke up at four o'clock. I was hella tired, so pissed off, hung over. What the hell the reason? But I'm not really hung over. I, I slept early, but, but you guys get the idea. You have to get back in the routine. So now I'm back in the routine, man. And it feels freaking great, man. When I got back in the routine, everything clicked. So when I sat down today, I was scared. Like Alex said, oh, we didn't trade in a while. Let's size down all this stuff. So for me, honestly, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even think about that because the reason I didn't think about that because Dude, I've been doing this so long. It's a process. What am I scared of? What am I fucking scared of? Uh, I don't want to get into that what if stuff. So there's two types of people, which is cool. Cool. It's completely fine to do that. But I don't want to get into this, oh, shit, I'm scared. Because the moment you start thinking you're scared, you are going to be fucking scared. Don't want to think about that. 
have trust in your process. So I woke up today, I had trust in my process. Everything was fine. Nothing, I didn't deviate from my process. I went to the bathroom on time. I had a regular bowel movement. I ate my cup of noodle. I got my water. I was scanning the markets in the morning. You know, I got back into my routine. So why am I scared? Why am I scared? I, I had really no FOMO uh, because I the, the rest of the week, every, and I looked back and every every stock was dead. There's nothing moving. And I was content with not trading day. And I was like, cool, I'm not, I don't want to trade. I'm tired. I'm going to go back to bed. So actually, I didn't want to trade. I was like hoping that nothing moved. But then a lot of things moved. But that's why I was able to do, I'm going to show you what I traded, but that's why I was not scared, dude. I was not scared because I didn't think about being scared. So try that technique. Try not even think about anything negative. Dude, I try to be very positive. So instead of saying, oh, I'm scared, do the, the reverse and say, think about only the positive things. Okay, I'm going to go stick to my process. I'm not going to have FOMO. So you know what I'm saying? So there's two ways to do it, right? You can say, oh, I'm scared. I'm scared. Uh, what, what if I enter too early? So do the reverse. Do the positive, okay? I am going to wait for my lines. I'm going to have patience. I'm going to, have, I'm going to, have to set my stops. I'm going to stick to my process. Those are the positive reinforcements versus thinking negative, okay? And so when I woke up, my daily routine is always look, look at the low-hanging fruit to see what is moving, what's not from the previous day, right? So the low-hanging fruit was VIV. No, they're all dead, dude. Nothing moved. <clears throat> they're all dead. There's really no low-hanging fruit. SES, perhaps. Um, but I didn't go until later. Um, so, but the, the great thing was when I woke up, the, there was a bunch of stuff on the scanner, man. Let's take a look at that. So what was the big one we played trade today? OBLN, right, guys? Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at that. Now we're pissed because it's all been fucking down, man. Ah, okay. So I woke up OBBLN read out. So the first thing I always do, I do the same thing over and over and over and over. It's the same routine, same process. So the first thing I do is I pull up Finviz and I look up OBLN. The reason I'm looking at Finviz is so I'm looking at the float. The flow is 5 million. Cool. I love 5 million because it's not too small and it's not too big. If it's too big, it's not going to move much. If it's too small, dude, it may move too much, <laughs> right? And so five, in my opinion, for myself, is a huge sweet spot. I love it because it, it moves percentage-wide enough for me to make money, but it's not too small for me to get squeezed. And so I'm looking at this, 21%, whatever, it's fine. Then I always check this. Bam SEC. Look at the flyings. I'm not a finalist expert. You can't be the best of everything. Um, and so I, I just know enough. I'm going, whoa, there's an effective. There's a sort of uh, possible dilution. <clears throat> but by knowing that, that there's that. Just because they have possible dilution or they, they can dilute doesn't mean they will dilute. But what I'm looking for is this, guys. I'm, I'm looking for the fact that they are possibly diluting. It means that the company is a piece of shit. It means that the company needs money. No, so I, I don't trust that they will dilute. That's how you blow up your account. A lot of these guys who are filings expert, fundamentals gurus. They go, oh my God, this, this company is, is going to dilute all this because they registered to dilute. They have an effective on this. And then I want to load up and that's why they get killed, okay? For me, price action dictates everything. Knowing the fundamentals behind the scenes helps you with your conviction, with your, you know, your, your thesis, but does not mean you should, you should go all in, okay? Price action dictates. So when I'm looking at this, I, I don't think of, oh, they will dilute. I'm thinking they can dilute if they want to, perhaps. It just means that this company sucks. It needs money. Okay, that's, that's basically what I'm looking for, guys. Uh, the only way you know if they really will sell into this is the hindsight. So now I'm looking at the chart. Oh, it's obvious they're selling. Oh, it's obvious. But at that time, when they fucking spike into 220, how did you fucking know they're going to fucking sell? If you knew, you would mortgage your house. You cannot fucking do that shit. All I know is if they can, and it's a pig, it's a piece of shit company. And so then I look at the big chart to see the 
the lines. I always, so this is the process that I use. So you guys understand what I mean by I'm looking at the, the filings. I'm not necessarily, because I'm not filing, I'm, just, I'm not gonna know exactly they're gonna sell. How do you know they're gonna fucking sell? Just because they can't sell doesn't mean they're gonna sell. Well, all these guys trap too. And so, but, the, but just knowing that it's looming, it's out there, it means that the company is, is in trouble. It needs money, right guys? So that's, I'm painting the big picture. So I always start with the one year and go, okay, dude, this dude, they're diluting like hell, man. Look at this. This stock was a $30 stock. So they keep fucking diluting all this shit down, right? So it confirms my thesis that this stock is a pig. It sucks. So I'm zooming in. I'm always zooming in to see what information I keep zooming in. Damn, this thing's diluting like crazy. <laughs> So until I see, I zoom in to the point where I can see something that gives me information. Okay, so right there, two months, boom. What do you see? Two twenty-five. You see that, guys? Huge resistance around this two twenty-five line. Huge resistance. I'm like fucking awesome, dude. I'm gonna wait, fucking there. So let me show you what I did. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.